27, Kimberly Nilsson. Batting third and playing first base, number 20, Tori Dew. Batting fourth and playing shortstop, number 11, Lauren Holyfield. Batting fifth and playing third base, number 30, Brittany Seal. Batting sixth and playing second base, number 16, Mackenzie Hopkins. Batting seventh and playing catcher, number 15, Bailey Stokes. Batting eighth and playing right field, number 21, Reagan Gavin. Batting ninth and playing left field, number 18, Savannah Lyon. Pitching on the mound for the Jones Lady Bobcats, number 24, Samantha Bueller. Head coach for Jones is Chris Robinson. He is assisted by Bob Harrington and Carlos Castro. Yeah. Your starting lineup for the Gulf Coast Lady Bulldogs. Leading off and playing shortstop, number two, Ashley Hickman. Batting second and playing catcher, number 16, Danny Kraft. Batting third and playing second, number nine, Emily Davis. Batting fourth and playing right field, number six, Brooke Gaston. Batting fifth and playing first base, number 13, Brittany Butler. Batting sixth, playing third, number 22, Brooke Ladner. Batting seventh and playing left field, number eight, Coco Bender. Batting eighth and playing designated player, number 14, Elise Richardson. Batting ninth and playing center field, number seven, Ket Campbell. And on the mound for the Gulf Coast Lady Bulldogs, number five, Paige Brill. Gulf Coast will be the home team on the scoreboard. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would, remove your hats and stand for our national anthem. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, out to day two of the MACJC softball tournament. Adam Gore on hand here. We've got the first game of the day, the first of three, coming your way here on Let's Go ICC. This is the winner bracket game between Gulf Coast and Jones County. We had the coin toss before the game to see who will be the home team, and Gulf Coast won the toss and elected to receive, I guess you can say, as they will be the home team on the scoreboard. We heard the starting lineups called out before the start of the game. Let's recap last night's action. Gulf Coast opened the tournament with an 8-2 win over host ICC. And then Jones took care of Pearl River in the nightcap, 9-0 in five innings. 
And that's where we're at now. Of course, the 3 o'clock game today will be the elimination game in the loser's bracket between ICC and Pearl River. The winner of that game will take on the loser of this game, as we'll explain more as we go throughout the day. As we're getting ready to start this one off, on in the circle for Gulf Coast will be Paige Brill. As she'll face Lone, Nielsen, and Dew here in the top of the first inning. CC Lawn last night was officially 0 for 2, or excuse me, 0 for 3. She reached on an error, walked and scored a run, grounded out to short, and started things off with a strikeout in the Pearl River game. Beautiful day for softball out here in Fulton. As we expect great crowds coming out today, as that was the case yesterday, you can basically call it standing room only. There's some fans that are, I guess you could say, tailgating out in left field as they're watching in the back of their trucks. Our first American National Bank first pitch goes for a strike from Brill. Brill quickly ahead in the count now, 0-2. Last night, Brill had three strikeouts against ICC. She had seven hits and gave up two runs, one of them being a home run by Ashley Lankford, another one scoring on a ground out. So both those runs were earned. One and two is the count on CeCe Long. Slaps one to the shortstop, comes up, gloves, and throws over in time for out number one. So now that will bring up Kimberly Nielsen. Nielsen last night, two for two. She was hit by a pitch. She doubled in a run and scored a run. She also had a single. As Jones, as we said, took care of Pearl River in five innings, nine to nothing. Had nine hits in that win. At first pitch, a ball. Brill, second offering, finds his own, even to the count now at one and one. One out, we're in the top of the first. There's no score between Gulf Coast and Jones County. Of course, Jones County, the number two team in the nation, and Gulf Coast does own one of the two wins that they've had or losses this season. There's a shot down the line. She's going to try to stretch it into a double. Slides in safely. And a great, great hustle play that time by Nielsen, but a good throw in. And so now a one-out double puts a runner in scoring position for Tori Dew. Last night, Dew was two for three. She had a double and a single. She scored a pair of runs. Dew on the season. Oh, she only has 95 RBIs as that pitch is high. We talked about Tori last night. She's batting 620 with a six. 65 on base percentage, and how about this? A 1.155 slugging percentage. Unheard of. That pitch outside got away from the catcher, but the runner did not advance. 2 0 is the count here on due. Well, you can't afford to walk her because the lineup behind her does a great job of protecting her and forcing you to pitch to her. I believe the count now is 3 0. Yes, it is. 3-0 is the count. That pitch high for a ball. So Dew reaches on four straight pitches for balls. And now up will be Lauren Holyfield. One away. Runners on first and second. As this is Holyfield, she was one for three last night. She had an RBI single and scored a run. She also struck out swinging. So runners on first and second, one away here. We're in the top of the first, no score for Jones or Gulf Coast. Pitch coming right down the middle for a strike one. Take a look at Holyfield's numbers coming into this tournament. She's batting 493, a 565 on base percentage, and an 849 slugging percentage. This pitch fouled back and out of play on the season. She's got 64. RBIs, 13 home runs, 11 doubles, and a triple. 
And she's only struck out once and has thrown 23 walks. She's got an 0-2 count on her right now. On deck is Brittany Seal. This pitch popped up and out of play. The count will stay at 0-2. So runners on first and second for Jones. There's one out in a scoreless ball game. We're in the top of the first. The first of three games today. Pitch coming. It's lifted over the head of the second baseman. Will drop. And they're going to hold the runner as the runner had to sort of take her time to make sure that the ball was not going to be caught. So that's going to load the bases for Seal. There's one out here in the inning. They want to come out and sort of talk things over with their pitcher. Give us time to take a look at the numbers on Brittany Seal. Seal batting an even 500 coming into the tournament at 625 on base percentage. She's got a 750 slugging percentage on the year. She's got 49 RBI, six home runs, nine doubles, 54 hits for the freshman third baseman. So dangerous territory right here for Gulf Coast. What out, bases loaded, scoreless here in the top of the first. That first pitch in there for a strike. Second pitch coming, check swing. They're going to see if she went. They're going to ask for her to go. And the infield umpire said she did not go. And so the count now evens up at one and one. That pitch in there for a strike. One and two, now the count. Bases loaded for Jones, trying to break open a scoreless contest here in the top of the first. That pitch inside just misses for ball two. Two and two now the count. No place to put her. One out, bases loaded for Jones. Pitch coming, Seal pops this one back and out of play. Count stays at two and two. Well, it's well documented how good Jones is. That's the only way you can say it. But as we talked about, Gulf Coast owns one of their two losses this season. So Gulf Coast has a little bit of confidence that they can come in and play well against this number two team in the nation. That pitch low and inside. Count goes full, 3-2. No place to put her here. So dangerous situation for Gulf Coast. There's a shot right back up the middle, but gets past the pitcher. And that's going to score a run. So an RBI single by Seal. Inches away from possibly being a tailor-made double play to get out of the inning. But that's what happens when you get the breaks that way. That's how you're 44-2 on the season. That one either bump, jumps up and turns into a double play or it does what it does, hits the ground and runs hard and drives in a run. Now up is Mackenzie Hawkins, the second baseman. Last night, Hawkins 0 for 2 with a walk. Coming into the tournament, Hawkins batting 333 with a 440 on base percentage and a 521 slugging percentage. A chance to push those numbers up here. That pitch inside for a ball. Leaves the count now at 1 and 1. A lot of chatter in the ballpark right now as Jones leading this one one to nothing with one out and bases loaded. Hawkins watches that one go by. Two of one now the count. Both these teams have already qualified for the NJCAA Region 23 tournament. And with Jones winning yesterday, they will host the Region 23 tournament next week. That'll be a Thursday, Friday, Saturday tilt. As that pitch outside for a ball. Pitcher wanted to know where it was. He said a little low and outside. Ask him for the count. 
Pitch coming and lifted to the gap. Center fielder can't get to it. It's down. One run will score. Two runs will score. And that will do it. A two-run double by Hawkins. And so Jones out to a quick start here. They're leading three to nothing. Runners on second and third, and there's only one out here in the top of the first. And now coming to the plate is Bailey Stokes. Last night, Stokes one for two with the walk. She singled, and her courtesy runner, with her being the catcher, scored a run. And so a chance for Jones to go ahead and build on this 3-0 lead. There's one out and runners in scoring position. That pitch high for a ball. Brill last night against ICC had three strikeouts. She gave up seven hits, but her defense played outstanding behind her. Made some great plays. Struggling a little bit about against the red hot bats of Jones here in the top of the first. That pitch low for a ball. Two and zero oh is the count now on Stokes. She is the seventh batter of the inning as that pitch finds his own for strike one. A beautiful day for softball out here at ICC. It's that pitch right across the heart of the plate for strike two. We do thank everyone for watching here on Let's Go ICC. The count goes full, 3-2. This pitch foul back. This count will stay full here on Stokes. On deck is Gavin. Of course, Gavin had that three-run bomb last night as she went one for three. This pitch foul back out of play. Nice battle at the plate right now between Stokes and Brill. Brill looking for that second out of the inning here, try to keep the damage down to a minimum. Three-two pitch coming. Swung on, hit, lifted to center field. Right fielder calls everyone off. They're going to try to advance the runners, and they will do so. So a sacrifice fly by Stokes pushes across another run. And now Jones leading four to nothing with two outs here in the top of the first. So Gavin will dig in. With a runner on third, two away. We take a look at the numbers on Gavin. She's 303 on the season with a 382 on base percentage and 394 slugging percentage. Of course, those numbers went up after yesterday. Remind everyone, we'll have all three games coming your way today here on Let's Go ICC. It's that pitch. A little low for a ball. This pitch sharply fouled back towards the volleyball court area. As we've had a lot of foul balls hitting this inning, so they're having to uh, chase down a few. This pitch popped up a mile high. First baseman coming in, calling everyone off, makes the play right on the line, and that will do it. But Jones able to play four runs off four hits and no errors. We move to the bottom half of the inning with number two Jones leading four to nothing here in the winner's bracket.
Hey, welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen, as we now move to the bottom half of the first inning. Jones County leading 4 nothing here in the first game of the day of day two. This is the winner's bracket game. As this is Samantha Bueller in the circle. That first pitch in there for a strike. Hickman, Kraft, and Davis do up here for Gulf Coast. Ashley Hickman last night had a big game. She went three for five. Had a pair of runs scored and stole a base. She actually reached four times as she reached once on a fielder's choice. First pitch popped up. It's in trouble territory, but the left fielder charging up and making a nice play for the first out of the inning. And so now that will bring up the catcher, Danny Kraft. Kraft last night singled, reached on an error, and walked. She struck out once and flew out to left. Kraft takes that first pitch low for a ball. Well, as we mentioned, the winner of this game will move on to Sunday's championship game. The first of a possible two championship games will start at 1 o'clock. The loser of this game will move down to the... 5 o'clock game, and there's basically a line out to left by Kraft. And so quickly, two away here at the bottom of the first. Second baseman, number nine, Emily Davis. And so now that will bring up the second baseman, Emily Davis. Davis singled, walked twice, and flew out to left. She had a run scored, drove in a pair of runs. For Gulf Coast last night. Davis on the season batting 404 with a 430 and a 564 on base and slugging percentage. 2-0 the count here on Davis. If Davis were to reach then Brooke Gaston would be up next. There's a shot. Center fielder comes up and tries to make a play on it. It drops. We're going to call that a base hit that time as it was a tough play for the center fielder to get to. So two out and a runner on first now for Brooke Gaston, the right fielder. Gaston on the year, 321 batting average, on base percentage of 387 and a slugging percentage of 493. If you're just now joining us, it's 4 to nothing in favor of Jones. First pitch popped up. It's drifting back and out of play right over the top of us here in the ICC broadcast booth. So if anybody was still sleepy in the broadcast booth, they are now awake. As that one popped back for strike one. Like a little change up that time, but couldn't quite find the zone. Even the count now at one and one. Davis is on first. There's two outs here in the bottom of the first. Swung on, foul back and out of play. One and two now goes the count. That pitch high and outside. So Gulf Coast trying to spark a two-out rally here. Swung on, popped up, and I believe this one's going to get out of play again. This time it just missed us up here in the broadcast booth as Matthew Little was diving for cover. Four nothing is your score, Jones County. We're in the bottom of the first with Gulf Coast at the plate. This shot lifted. Left fielder drifting back, 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 and just over her head. One run will score, and this will be a double for Gaston. Thought there for a minute that one might have had a chance to get out of here. The left fielder had to check for the fence that time, and it hit just at the bottom of the fence. So felt like she was running, running out of real estate. And so now, 4-1 to one is your score in favor of Jones. And this is Brittany Butler, the first baseman at the plate with a runner on second and two away here in the bottom of the first. First pitch low for a ball.
This pitch lifted, but it's going to drift foul. Nice idea going with the pitch to see if she could sneak one down the line that time. Would have scored the second run of the inning for Gulf Coast. The shot to the shortstop, gloves cleanly, throws across the way in time for out number three. But Gulf Coast does get a run back as they score one run on two hits and no errors here in the bottom of the first. We'll step away and be back with more here on letsgoicc.com right after this. And welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen. Two up the 9-1-2 batters here for Jones. This is Savannah Lyon, the left fielder. We'll start things off here for Jones County. That pitch just outside for a ball. Well, there has been tons of chatter at the ballpark today as that pitch finds the strike zone. Both dugouts have been vocal. The fans have been into the game. It's just, it's been a good weekend for softball so far. Swing and a miss that time by Lyon. Behind in the count now, one and two. Following this game, we'll take about a, I don't know, we'll call it a 20, 30 minute break in between games. And then we'll have ICC and Pearl River coming your way in an elimination game. The loser of this game will take on the winner of the ICC and Pearl River game at 5 o'clock. The winner of this game that you're currently watching will advance to the championship games on Sunday. This pitch foul back and out of play. So it went near the beach volleyball area of the facilities out here. One and two is your count here on Lyon. Last night, she was 0 for 2 with a walk. Takes that one for a ball. Evens the count now at 2 and 2. This pitch popped up. Stays in play. Catcher calls everyone off and makes the play for out number one. Nice job that time by the catcher of Gulf Coast. That's typically going to be a pitcher's play with her coming up to the ball, being able to look at it, with the catcher having to turn around and turn her back to the defense. So a good job of discarding the helmet and finding the ball and making the out for out number one. Now up is going to be CC Long. She grounded out to the shortstop her first time up. Shows slap hit, pulls back, but still caught a strike. Four one is your score in favor of Jones. We're in the top of the second, and that pitch finds the zone for strike two. Oh, and two quickly ahead is Brill. Brill, that kind of laughed that one off. As she thought that was strike three, her infield also thought so as she was they were running to her pitcher. But instead, the count goes one and two on Lawn. This pitch popped up. Center fielder takes a few steps up, jogs up, and makes the play for out number two. 
Gulf Coast looking for a three up, three down inning here to see if they can't get back to the bats and chip away at this 4 1 lead. And, to the plate, number and this is Kimberly Nielsen. She got everything started for Jones last time. She doubled and eventually came around to score a run as part of that four run top of the first. That pitch right down the heart of the plate for a strike. This pitch foul back. Strike two. So 0 2 pitch is coming. Fouled off and out of play. That's one thing Jones has done well so far in this tournament is battle at the plate. Able to find contact, foul off a lot of balls to be able to keep at bats at live. We saw Mackenzie Hawkins last night foul off six pitches after falling behind in the count 0 2 before eventually drawing a walk. Is that pitch outside for a ball? Four one is your score. We're in the top of the second. Gulf Coast fans thought that was strike three, but did not get the call. Two and two now goes the count. And there's a shot past the second baseman. Gets to the outfield, but does not get deep enough for her to try to go to second. So Nielsen, with a hard line drive past the second baseman, now goes two for two on the day as she reaches on a single. Now up is going to be Tori Dew, the first baseman. She walked and scored a run her first time up, looking to try to extend this inning as there's two outs and a runner on first for Jones they lead four to one this pitch popped up a mile high pitcher calling everyone off and makes the play for out number three no runs off one hit and no error as Jones leads it four to one as we move to the bottom of the second And welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen, as we move now to the bottom of the second inning. This is Brooke Ladner, the third baseman who will lead things off here. Stands in, takes that first pitch for strike one. Ladner, Bender, and Richardson do up here for Gulf Coast. They trail four to one. Ladner finds herself quickly behind in the count 0-2. That pitch high. Saw Ladner do that a couple times last night on high pitches. When she goes to get out of the way, she kind of throws that elbow out towards the ball. As this pitch popped up, first baseman 
Thought she did a little dance trying to find the ball for a second, but gets the fly out in foul territory. So one away here in the bottom of the second. 4-1 Jones leading Gulf Coast. And now up the left fielder, Coco Bender. Bender quick as a hiccup. As she showed off that speed last night. Pops this one up. It's going to stay in play. First baseman comes over and makes the catch again. As she went diving into the fence on the Jones dugout. And so just like that, two away here in the bottom of the second. And now Elise Richardson, the DP, going to try to spark a two-out rally here. Gulf Coast did it last time whenever Emily Davis reached on a single and scored on a double by Brooke Gaston. That all came with two outs. So Richardson trying to spark it here. This one hit back and out of play. One and one now the count here on Richardson. If Richardson were to reach, then we go to the number nine batter, Cat Campbell, the center fielder. Pitch coming. Just low for a ball. Two of one now goes the count here on Richardson. There's a shot out to left. Left fielder having to go back. It's over her head. It's down for one. She's going to go for two. Let's see if they're going to try to get her to three. And she's going to stay at second. So it looked like the ball jumped a little bit more off the bat than the outfielder was anticipating. So a two-out double by Richardson. Now up will be Cat Campbell, the number nine batter for Gulf Coast with two outs. And Jones leading... 4-1 to one here in the bottom of the second. That pitch just missing the zone. If you're wondering why Gulf Coast is a home team, once we get past the opening round of the tournament, it actually goes to a coin flip on who will be the home and away team. You would think earning the higher seed in your division would earn you the right to host home or away in tournament play until you at least meet somebody with the same division, I guess, seating as you, but that's not the case. Some things in life just don't make sense. That being one of them. One and two is your count. Pitch coming, and that's our first pit stop barbecue strikeout of the day. Ed Jones gets out of the inning with no damage done. No runs off one hit and no error. We've played two, and Jones County leads 4-1. to one. And welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen. That first pitch to Holyfield. 
In there for a strike. Four to one. We're in the top of the third. Time was called. And I guess it was granted. As this is Lauren Holyfield, the shortstop. She singled and scored a run in her first at bat of the day. That pitch in there for strike two. 0 oh and 2. Quickly ahead in the count is Brill. 4 1 is your score in favor of Jones. They're at the plate. This pitch popped up. Center fielder calling everyone off. Runs up and makes the play for out number one. So now that will bring up Brittany Seal. Seal singled, drove in a run, and scored a run in the first inning, part of the four-run four first inning for Jones. She's playing first, or excuse me, third base today. That pitch inside for a ball. That pitch low for ball two. Two and oh. Now is the count on seal on deck is Mackenzie Hawkins. She had a two run double in her first at bat of the day. That pitch low for a ball. Quickly ahead in the count is seal 3 0. So you figure the red light's on in this situation, and it was. Takes that pitch for a strike. 3 1 is the count. That pitch outside, so a free pass issued to Seal. So a runner on first with one out here in the top of the third. And Mackenzie Hawkins will come to the plate for Jones County. Catcher going out to talk to Brill to possibly calm her down a little bit. So now up is going to be Mackenzie Hawkins. As we said, she doubled, drove in a pair of runs her first at bat, but was left stranded. As that was part of that four-run top of the first. Pitch finds the zone. Evens up the count now at one and one. Remind everyone, coming up next here on Let's Go ICC.com will be the ICC and Pearl River elimination game. As that pitch finds the zone. Back to back strikes by Brill gets her ahead in the count now, one and two. There's one out in the top of the third. Jones leading four to one. Hawkins puts a charge into one, got a little bit underneath it. Left fielder comes out and makes the play for out number two. Not deep enough for the runner to advance. And that will bring up Bailey Stokes. Stokes had a sacrifice fly to right to drive in a run in the first inning. 15, so two away now. As Gulf Coast is kind of quieted the bats, if you will of Jones after that four run first inning. That pitch in there for a strike. And that one also in there for a strike. Brill is grooving right now. As she has found that outside corner. See if she comes back in with something inside to maybe kind of change them up and does so. Fouls it off. The count will stay at 0-2. A great crowd turning out to the ballpark today. Once again. 0-2 is the count. This pitch popped up, but it looks like it's going to drift out of play and will do so. So the count will stay 0-2. Getting a couple of foul balls back. 
as there have been tons of foul balls hit in this game. 0-2 oh, pitch coming from Brill. Low for a ball. 1-2 now is the count. If you're just now joining us, this is the first of three games this afternoon here on Let's Go ICC.com. You're watching Gulf Coast and Jones County here in the winner's bracket as this pitch popped up. Drifting, 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 and will get foul. Last night, Gulf Coast knocked off host ICC 8-2 in the first game of the day. Then Jones County knocked off Pearl River 9-0 in five innings. ICC and Pearl River will play at 3 o'clock in the first elimination game of the tournament. The loser of this game, as you're watching right now, will play at 5 as that pitch fouled off but caught for strike three. So Gulf Coast puts another donut on the board brought to you by Sweet Cheek Sandwich and Donut Shot. On the hill from the ICC Student Services. Go by there for breakfast and lunch. We move to the bottom of the third. It's 4-1 Jones County. We move to the bottom of the third inning. Ashley Hickman, the number one batter, will start things off. So we'll go one, two, three here in the bottom of the third. Umbire calling time, reminding some of the Gulf Coast players to get back in the dugout. Try to sneak bunt attempt, but it goes foul. If you're just now joining us, 4-1 to one is your score in favor of Jones. They scored all four runs in the top of the first inning. Kimberly Nielsen doubled, came around to score on a single by Brittany Seal, and then Tori Dew walked. Lauren Holyfield hit a single. Both of those came around to score on a double by Mackenzie Hawkins. Seal eventually came around to score on a sacrifice fly by Stokes. That gave them the 4 nothing lead in the top half of the inning. Then Gulf Coast answered with a run in the bottom half of the first on an RBI double by Brooke Gatston, who scored Emily Davis. And that's pretty much been your scoring so far in the contest. 4-1, and we're in the bottom of the third. 0-2 is the count now on Hickman. She flew out to left her last time up. Swings on one, rips it foul towards the Gulf Coast dugout. And that's the reason why the umpire was saying stay inside the dugout. As we're going to send that one over to the third base umpire. Must have had a scuff mark on it. And that is going to be the case. So it looks like they're going to uh, say that one's out of commission. So 0-2 is the count here on Hickman. Hickman, Kraft, and Davis do up here for Gulf Coast. Reaches for it, swings and miss. The put out across the way in time. That's a pit stop barbecue strikeout. Two to three on the put out for the first out of the inning. 16, Danny so now that will bring up Danny Kraft, the catcher. She flew out to left. Actually, it's more of a line drive to left. Takes that first pitch for a strike, shakes her head, 
and agreeing with the call. 0-1 is the count. This pitch hit, lifted. Shortstop drifting back, but the center fielder calling everyone off and making the play for out number two. So quickly, two away out, two away here. In the bottom of the third, Jones leading 4-1. to one. This is the winner's bracket game of the MACJC State Softball Tournament. Now up is Emily Davis. Davis singled and scored the lone run of the day here for Gulf Coast. Trying to spark a two-out rally. And that's what she and Gaston did last time. Gaston, the right fielder, on deck. Davis swings on that one. A little behind it. Fouls it back for strike two. Remind everyone, coming up next, ICC and Pearl River in an elimination game here on Let'sGoICC.com. That pitch just outside for ball one. One and two now goes to count here on Davis. As we mentioned, if Davis were to reach, Brooke Gaston would be up next as this pitch fouled back and out of play. And once again, having to go chase down some softballs as there have been tons upon tons upon tons of foul balls hit in today's game. So one and two is the count with two away here in the bottom of the third. Jones leading four to one. That pitch low eaves of the count now at two and two. Campus security has walked into the press box, so apparently they're aware that Buddy Wayne is on campus today. As this pitch popped up, left fielder dancing around trying to find it, does so for out number three. Three up, three down. In the bottom of the third, 4-1, Jones leading. And welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen. We move to the top of the fourth inning. It's still a 4-1 score in favor of Jones. As this is going to be the 8-9-1 batters, Reagan Gavin at the plate for Jones here. She popped out to first. Her first at bat. We do welcome everyone watching on Let's Go ICC.com. We want to welcome all of our friends from Gulf Coast and Jones County. Of course, Jones County is hosting the best of three series at their place. So that is on JCJC.TV this week if you went there and looked for that. Of course, Jones County will be hosting the Region 23 tournament. 
next week. And there's a nice rise ball out of the strike zone. Back back to back pit stop barbecue strikeouts now for Brill. So Brill, as we said, after that tough start in the first inning, she's been grooving afterwards. She's only allowed one hit. In the last 10 batters, she's got two strikeouts amongst those batters as well. That pitch fouled off for strike one. So this is Lyon. She popped out to the catcher in her first at bat. That pitch just inside almost hit her. So the count evens up at one and one with one out here in the top of the fourth. This pitch popped up. Catcher pretty much, or excuse me, pitcher pretty much just takes a step to the side, calls everyone off for out number two. So now up will be CC Lawn. CC 0 for 2 on the day with a ground out to short and a fly out to center. That pitch low and outside for a ball. CC a slap hitter, or that's what she shows in each at bat. That pitch inside nearly hit her. And Matt makes a good point. The way she dodged that pitch technically is a swing and could have been called a strike, but instead is ball two. That pitch just low and outside. 3-0 and now goes the count here on lawn. Four straight pitches, and she trots down to first with a two-out walk. And now up is going to be Kimberly Nielsen. She has been the girl of the day so far for Jones County. She's two for two with a double and a run scored. She singled her last time up. So now she's trying to look to extend this inning with two outs and a runner on first. That pitch... Right across the heart of the plate for strike one. As we mentioned, both these teams have already punched their ticket to the Region 23 tournament next week. This pitch fouled back and out of play. Jones County will host the Region 23 tournament. So right now that field, or I guess the field is filled with LSU units, Jones, and Gulf Coast, Already in that tournament. ICC and Pearl River will be playing for that final spot in the Region 23 tournament. Coming at you next here on Let's Go ICC.com. One and two pitch coming. Swung on but rip foul. Oh, a lady who just needs to tell somebody thank you out there in foul territory nearly was taken out with that foul ball. One and two remains your count with two outs. There's a grounder right back to the pitcher. Throw over is in time for out number three. So the first time today, Nielsen has been retired. Once again, Gulf Coast keeping the Jones County bats quiet, trying to come up here in the bottom of the fourth to spark a rally, 4-1. Jones leading as we move to the bottom of the fourth.
And welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen. As the four, five, six batters do up here for Gulf Coast as they trail four to one in the bottom of the fourth to Jones County. Brooke Gaston, the right fielder, doubled and drove in a run her first time up in the contest. Looking to try to spark a rally here as Gulf Coast pitcher Paige Brill has done a good job of keeping Jones' bats quiet over the last three innings as this pitch hit sky high, shortstop running over and can't find the ball. And it drops harmlessly to the ground in foul territory. As that one goes for a strike. Gaston, Butler, and Ladner do up. As we mentioned, it's 4-1 Jones here in this winner's bracket game. A big swing and a miss on that changeup. And behind the count now, 0-2. Actually, 1-2 is the count. This pitch popped back. The count will stay at 1-2. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning, 4-1 Jones County leading. There's a shot past a diving shortstop, so a leadoff single for Brooke Gaston. As she's two for two on the day. And that's the first time today that Gulf Coast has gotten the leadoff batter on base. So now what will be Brittany Butler, the first baseman? She's 0 for 1 with a ground out to first. That pitch outside for a ball. The loser of this game will move to the 5 o'clock game today. As Bunt shown, but Bunt's it foul. The winner of this game will move into the championship game. Game one of a possible two championships will be Sunday at 1 o'clock. Pitch coming high for a ball. Two and one now is the count here. On Butler. On first is Gaston. There's no outs. We're in the bottom of the fourth with Jones leading four to one. This pitch foul back for strike two. So two two count here on Butler. That pitch outside. Count goes full. 3-2 on Butler. So the payoff pitch coming. And it's outside for a ball. So now Gulf Coast getting something going here in the bottom of the fourth. Runners on first and second. No outs. And now Brooke Ladner, the third baseman, is up. Have a break of the action right now as Jones is wanting to come out and Sort of settle down their pitcher in this situation. Four to one is your score. We'll do a quick scoring recap. In the first inning, Jones scored four runs. Kimberly Nielsen doubled, scored on an RBI by Brittany Seal. And then Tory Dew walked, followed by a single by Lauren Holyfield. They both scored on a double by Mackenzie Hawkins, who scored on a sac or excuse me, then Seal scored on a sacrifice fly by Bailey Stokes. That all in the top of the first. And in the bottom half of the first inning, Emily Davis singled and scored on a double by Brooke Gaston. And that's where we stand so far in a four to one contest here in the bottom of the first. Runners on first and second, no outs for Ladner. Ladner tries to lay down a bunt. Fouls it back for strike one. Like Ladner was going to try to sacrifice the runners over in scoring position with no outs here in the inning. Ladner popped out in foul territory. This pitch hit, drifting back as the center fielder makes the play. Not deep enough for the runners to go. So one away here. Runners stay on first and second. And now this is going to be Coco Bender, the left fielder. Eight, Coco Bender. 
Bender also popped out to the first baseman in foul territory on a nice play by Tori Dew as she crashed into the protective screen in the first base dugout. That pitch low for a ball. Bender fouls this one out of play. He was the count now at one and one. There's one out. Runners on first and second. The runner on first is Brooke Gaston. Or excuse me, that's the runner on second. The runner on first is Brittany Butler. Shows bunt but can't lay it down. And so now one and two is the count. Well, like once again, Gulf Coast trying, kind of trying to surprise them with the bunt. But the first baseman was playing in tight that time. So now with two strikes, you feel like the bunt's off. There's a shot. It's going to drop. Shortstop gloves. Tries to throw it first, but not in time. So Bender will reach on the fielder's choice. And Gaston will advance to third. So now there's two outs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And now up is Richardson. Richardson doubled her last time up. Gulf Coast. Would love to get a double out over this time. Trailing four to one here in the bottom of the fourth with runners on the corners. Jones getting their defensive signals here. Gulf Coast would like to play at least one of these runs to cut this lead in half. That pitch across for a strike. A one pitch coming, swing and a miss. As Richardson that time left no doubt with that swing of the bat, but just couldn't find contact. And swing and a miss for strike three, and Jones County gets out of the inning with no damage done with a pit stop barbecue strikeout, the third one of the day. We played four. Four to one, Jones leads. Back with more right after this. And welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen, as the three, four, five batters will be up here for Jones in the top of the fifth. This is Tori Dew, the first baseman at the plate. She's 0 for 1 on the day with a walk. She has scored a run. Jones leading 4 to 1. That pitch across the way for strike one. As we mentioned, Paige Brill has been outstanding minus that first inning. She has really kept these powerful Jones bats quiet. She's only allowed one hit against her past 14 batters. She's walked two along the way and struck out two more. That pitch a ball. Gulf Coast fans liked it. I believe two and one now is the count. Pitch coming, and that one must have been a little low. Gulf Coast head coach kind of just comes out of the dugout, does a little walk down to sort of know that the umpire is keeping an eye on him as that pitch looked pretty good. 3-1 now the count here. 
And that's a walk. So do for the second time today. Reaches on the walk. And now up will be Lauren Holyfield. She is one for two on the day with a single and scored a run in her first at bat. Her last time up, she flew out to center field. 4-1 is your score. Jones County leading with a runner on first and no outs here in the top of the fifth. That pitch finds the quarter of the plate for strike one. As Gulf Coast fans still getting on the uh, umpire pretty good. This ball popped a mile high. First baseman calls everyone off and makes the play. So what a way here. As this is now Brittany Seal coming to the plate. Seal one for one with an RBI and a run scored. She walked her last time up. She's working with one out and a runner on first here in the top of the fifth. That pitch low for a ball. One and oh is the count here on Seal. Fouls that one down the first baseline. Oh and two, or excuse me, one and one now is the count. On deck is Mackenzie Hawkins. If Hawkins or Seal were to reach, then Bailey Stokes would get a chance at at bat. This pitch popped up and out of play. One and two now goes to count here on Seal. Once again, a beautiful day for softball here in Fulton. Temperatures in the high 70s. There's a slight breeze as one and two is the count here on Seal. Seal a dribbler to second. Throw to second is in time. Throw to first. In time. So dial that up. And ICC Dining Services double play. Four, six to three on the putout. And we move to the bottom of the fifth with Jones County leading four to one. And welcome back to action. We move to the bottom of the fifth inning. The 9 1 2 batters do up here for Gulf Coast. This is Kat Campbell at the plate. She struck out looking in her first at bat. Takes that pitch, low it outside for a ball. There's a dribbler to third. Glove cleanly, throw across the way. In time for out number one. Back to the top of the lineup we go. Ashley Hickman, who is 0 for 2 on the day. Ashley Hickman. 
in her first at bat. She flew out to left. Last time up, she struck out swinging, was put out on the throw after the ball got away from the catcher. There's a butt. It's going to roll foul for strike one. Game two today will feature ICC and Pearl River in the first elimination game of the day. That one's scheduled for a 3 o'clock start time. We are moving pretty good to be able to get that one on the start. Shortstop flies back and able to get that one for out number two. So quickly, two away here in the bottom of the fifth. And now Danny Kraft, who is 0 for 2 on the day with a fly out to left and center, will step in trying to extend this inning. 4-1, Jones leads it here in the winner's bracket game. That pitch high for a ball. The loser of this game will move to an elimination game at 5 o'clock against the winner between ICC and Pearl River. The winner of this game, of course, will advance to Sunday's championship game where they would have to lose two in order to lose the state title, or state championship, I should say. Jones County with the win yesterday, 9 nothing in five innings over Pearl River, also earned the right to host the Region 23 tournament next week. That'll be a Thursday, Friday, Saturday tournament. Gulf Coast, who is at the plate right now, trailing 4-1, to one, picked up an 8-2 to two win over host ICC in the first game of the tournament. That pitch low for a ball. 2-0 and now is the count here on Kraft. If Kraft was to reach, then Emily Davis would be at bat next. That pitch low for a ball. So three straight pitches now makes it a 3-0 count. That pitch right down the middle of the plate for strike one. Three and one now goes to count here on Kraft. There's a dribbler to second. Hawkins steps in front of it, throws across the way in time for a three up, three down inning for Gulf Coast. No runs off, no hits, and no errors. We have played five. Jones County leading four to one. We move now to the top of the sixth inning as due up will be the six, seven, eight batters here for Jones. And this is Mackenzie Hawkins who will lead things off here. She is one for two on the day. She has a double with two RBIs. She flew out to left her last time up. This ball is going to drop for a base hit. So Hawkins Hawkins 
reaches with the leadoff single. So now up will be Bailey Stokes. Her first time up, she had a sacrifice fly to right to drive in a run. Part of that four-run first inning. Then she struck out swinging her last time up. Shows bunt. Lays it down nicely. Throw across to first is in time. So a sacrifice bunt. Pushes Hawkins to second. And all sacrifices are brought to you by the BSU here at ICC, the oldest organization on campus. Brother Chris Burrows has been in charge of that since 1998. So now up with one out and a runner on second is Reagan Gavin. She is 0 for 2 today with a strikeout. Stands in, takes that first pitch for strike one. Once again, great crowds turning out today for the state softball tournaments. That pitch is high. One and one now the count here on Gavin. On deck is Savannah Lyon. She is 0 for 2 on the day. Pitch is low and inside. Two of one now goes to count here on Gavin. We talked about Gavin last night. She had that three-run bomb in the third. Part of that 9-0 win for Jones over Pearl River. That pitch low in the dirt gets away, and Hawkins will scamper to third. So a runner is at third with one out. That hit by Hawkins was only the second hit since the first inning given up by Paige Briel. She has been impressive. As that was ball four, so now runners on the corners for Jones. We have a new batter coming in here for Jones. That is going to be Kalen Gibson. I um, hope I'm saying that right. But Gibson will be your new batter here for Jones, wearing number 25. She'll be batting in place of Savannah Lyon, the left fielder. Figure this is going to be a sub-in, sub-out situation here for Gibson. So what a way here. Runners on the corner for Jones. See if they put Gavin in motion. First pitch is high for a ball. Gavin on the season, well, she has no stolen bases. She's been caught on her only attempt as that pitch in there for a strike. What a one now is the count here on Gibson. Pitch outside for a ball. 2-1 now goes the count here. We're in the top, or yes, top of the sixth inning. 4-1 to one is your score in favor of Jones. That pitch, ooh, just low apparently. 3-1 now goes to count here on Gibson. Of course, we're a little removed from home plate, so can't really tell where the pitches are that well. And Gibson that time started heading down to first, was called back with strike two. So 3-2 is the count here on Gibson. The payoff pitch coming from Brill. Liner to first. Steps on and gets the double play to get out of the inning with no damage done. A gift, if you will, there for Gulf Coast. So no runs off one hit and no error. Gulf Coast looking to get their bats fired up, trailing 4-1 to as we move to the bottom of the six.
And hey, welcome back to Action as we have a Trustmark Bank scoreboard update for all of our Jones fans watching. The baseball team, number one team in the nation, leads Holmes three to one, or three to nothing here after one complete. Jones looking to try to make it a sweep in the best of three series. There's a shot and a diving play at center field. As a great, great play that time. by CeCe Lawn robbing Emily Davis of what would have been a base hit, maybe even an extra base hit. So now, Brooke Gaston, who is two for two on the day with a single and a double and an RBI, the right fielder at the plate with one away here in the bottom of the six. Jones County leading four to one here in the winner's bracket. That pitch. Low it inside for a ball. Remind you, coming up at 3 o'clock will be the ICC and Pearl River game. That's the first elimination game of the tournament. Ball popped up. Center fielder calling everyone off and makes the play for out number two. So CC Lawn. One out away for tying the world record for most putouts in an inning. And in case you didn't know, there's a lot of people that hold that record because there's only three possible putouts in an inning. That pitch fouled back for strike one. Four one is your score. We're in the bottom of the six. Gulf Coast running out of outs here. Is that pitch high for a ball? If Butler reaches, then Brooke Ladner, the third baseman, would be up next. Butler on the day, 0 for 1 with the walk. This pitch fouled back. In her first at bat, she grounded out to the shortstop. Last time up, walked, but was put out on a fielder's choice in the fourth inning. That pitch outside for a ball. Two and two now goes the count here on Butler. Pitch is low in the bur uh, excuse me, in the dirt for a ball. Count goes full, three two here for Butler. Swag on popped up. And Lawn adds her name to the long list of people that are tied for the world record for most putouts in an inning. All three putouts that time to center field. We've played six. Jones leading four to one as we move to the seventh. And welcome back to action as we move now to the top of the seventh inning. Jones County leading four to one. The one, two, three batters do up here in the seventh. This is CC Lawn. She is 0 for 2 with a walk. Slap butt, filled it nicely, snap throw down. And they're going to say interference on the runner. And 
And we're, they're going to talk things over. They're going to say she interfered with the throw, but it didn't look like she was inside the line. So they're going to talk things over here with the home p plate umpire. It happened so quickly, but the umpire also quickly came up and made the call for the out. As I said, though, it didn't look like she was outside the line. She was running straight through the bag like you normally see players running to first. And she don't have eyes in the back of their head to know that the ball was coming her way. So now they're going to uh, talk everything over. I, I think Jones County has got a legit argument here because if that's the case, then you could pretty much just throw the ball and hit anybody running to first to get them out. So if they overturn this call, I wouldn't be surprised in this situation because the girl was running straight through the bag. And they're going to uphold it. I can't say that I agree with that at all because she didn't do anything to run around through or in the way of the throw. She was just running straight through the bag. So we're going to say runner interference on that put out. And now that will bring up Kimberly Nielsen. Nielsen on the day, two for three. She's doubled, scored a run in her first time up. Singled and then last time up grounded out one to three. One away here. Count is one and zero. Oh. Lifts one. It's going to drop. No, it's not. Great job that time by the speedy outfielder. As that was Bender, who found an extra gear to rob Nielsen of her second double of the day. And so now two away here in the top of the seventh. This is Tori Dew, whose own base percentage now is probably well above 200. She's reached twice on a walk today, has flew out or popped out to the pitcher in her second at bat. That pitch low for a ball. One and one now the count here on Dew, two away here in the top of the seventh. That pitch high for a ball. 2-1 now goes the count. So two away. We're in the top of the seventh with Jones leading 4-1. to one. A trip to the championship game on the line here. That pitch low for a ball. 3-1 now goes the count here on Dew. As we said, Dew has reached twice today already. On walks. And now make it three in a row, or two in a row, but three times today. She has gotten a free pass. And so now up will be Lauren Holyfield. Holyfield has one for three on the day. She singled, scored a run. Her last time up, she popped out to first base. So two away here in the top of the seventh. The runner on first. That pitch is low for a ball. Paige Brill looking a little frustrated right now in the circle, but she has done an outstanding job. She has kept the bats quiet for the most part, only allowing two hits since the first inning. As that pitch, oh my goodness, a ball. Looked pretty good from here. So I believe 2-0 and is the count now here on Brooke Ladner. No, excuse me. This is Lauren Holyfield. Brooke Ladner will actually lead off the bottom of the seventh for Gulf Coast. Gulf Coast trying to get out of this inning with no damage done. See if they can mount a late inning rally here as they trail 4-1 to one and the top of the seventh. This pitch popped up. Left fielder drifting over, camps underneath it, and makes the play for out number three. So no runs. Oh, no hits and no error. One was left stranded. We move to the bottom of the seventh 
with Jones County leading 4-1. Welcome back to action as now we move to the bottom of the seventh. A Trustmark Bank scoreboard update. Jones County leading Holmes four to nothing after two innings complete in baseball. Hines leading Northwest in game two five to nothing in the top of the fifth, but Northwest with bases loaded. This is Brooke Ladner, the third baseman, 0 for 2 on the day at the plate, stands in and takes the first pitch for strike one. Mueller is not wasting any time. This pitch popped up. Right fielder chasing over and makes the play for out number one. Well, you can hear the buzz in the ballpark right now as Jones fans knowing they're two outs away for making it to their third straight state championship series here. Now up will be Coco Bender. Bender reached on a fielder's choice her last time up. Swings and misses on that first pitch for strike one. In her first at bat, she popped out in foul territory. One away, bottom of the seventh, Jones County leading four to one. Fouls that one back for strike two. Remind everybody, coming up at three o'clock, we will have the ICC and Pearl River game coming your way here on Let's Go ICC.com. And then at five o'clock, we will have. The third game of the day will be the second elimination game of the day. That pitch high for a ball. So quickly, the count evens up at two and two. So Bender is up. Takes that one for a ball. Count goes full. Richardson on deck. And if Bender or Richardson were to reach the number nine batter, Cat Campbell would be due up. 3-2 count here on Bender. Swing and a miss for another pit stop barbecue strikeout. The fourth strikeout of the day for Bueller and now Jones County just one out away from the state championship game tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Now up is Elise Richardson. She's one for two on the day with a double. She also struck out swinging. Her last time up takes that first pitch for a strike. I'll tell you what, Bueller is not wasting any time. She's getting the ball. Now she's going to step back and kind of catch her breath for a second. But, man, she is breezing these by the batters. There's a dribbler. Second baseman gets it, throws over, and that will do it. Your final score here. Jones County 4, Gulf Coast 1. Jones County will advance to Sunday's championship game. Gulf Coast will move on to today's 5 o'clock game as they will take on the winner between Pearl River and ICC. We want to thank everyone for watching here on Let's Go ICC.com. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll have game two today between ICC and Pearl River, the first elimination game of the tournament, right after this.